I thank you, Honorable Presiding Member. <coughs> uh, I must say, um, <coughs> I wish to make uh, a few comments uh, with regards to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. But before that, since the Honorable Dalasa Alaparuma is present, <coughs> Honorable Minister, my colleague, Mr. Selvraja Gajendran, in the Consultative Committee meetings, raised the issue of the Point Pedro uh, Post Office. Uh, which is uh, uh, about 60 perches. It's called uh, Parappa in Jaffna. Uh, six Parappa. Of that, the army has taken into forcible custody four, which is al al almost 40 perches. And only the remaining 20 perches is being, uh, they are being uh, willing to release to the post office. Now, that is a privately owned land that was gifted to the post office. Uh, and the post office requires the entire uh, 60 purchase. They have made representations directly uh, to the ministry, to your predecessor, uh, but uh, to date there has not been any action taken with that regard. I would ask your personal intervention uh, to release it uh, because it is for a good purpose uh, and, and you must uh, intervene and get that released, uh, Honorable Minister. Thank you. Uh, with regards to uh, foreign affairs, <coughs> I mean, you know, the tragedy, Honorable Presiding Member, is that uh, uh, they say, it is a tragedy, they say that uh, foreign affairs is an extension of uh, domestic policy. And in Sri Lanka's case, that is very true. Uh, Sri Lanka, unfortunately, whichever party that came to power, regardless, has had a foremost policy of uh, pursuing a single Buddhist identity. That the Sri Lankan state uh, it is only the single Buddhists who can be custodians of the state. And because they've had that outlook from the very inception, in fact, even before independence, I would say, that uh, when the British departed, uh, Sri Lanka took steps very quickly uh, to implement this notion of a single Buddhist state. And uh, as a result, created enemies within uh, the Tamils were the primary target. Today, of course, Muslims are also the target. Christians are uh, that it uh, unquestioningly will support a state, provided its own interests are looked after by that state. And that is, in fact, that what happened with the previous Mahindra Rajapaksa regime, to a point that, again, where the global scenario, the global power balance is shifting, and where there are contestations now, Sri Lanka again finds itself in a situation to pursue this singular Buddhist idea of the state that it had to pander to China to such an extent that it is so indebted to China today that it has allowed China to in fact come into Sri Lanka in a strategic way. In a strategic way. China's influence over Sri Lanka is not benign. And if anyone tries to make uh, that position out, that it is a benign uh, influence over Sri Lanka, they are lying. It is not benign, and as a consequence, you have created a geopolitical contestation between China uh, and the US and India on the other hand, and Sri Lanka is facing the consequences of that, con uh, of that contestation. Now, my point, Honorable Presiding Member, is that Sri Lanka could have used these geopolitical contestations to its benefit if only Sri Lanka is prepared to change its domestic policies about how it sees itself and if it can in fact be prepared to think, rethink itself into a plurinational state that recognizes the different nations within Sri Lanka and recognizes the different identities and its plurality and in fact celebrates that very diversity, then these geopolitical contestations, whatever they may be, can in fact be used to the advantage of the country as a whole, where you don't create this downward spiral that Sri Lanka is facing today. But alas, we don't have that sort of outlook. This government in particular boasts of the fact that it only got elected from a single Buddhist. Voltage from a vote bank. 
it, it celebrates the fact. I mean, normally governments would be quite upset to say that they are not a unifying factor, rather that they are a divisive factor. Not this government, not the Gotabe Rajapaksa era. They celebrate the fact that they were only recognized by the single bodies. Every single policy since this president came into power is to make an already bad situation worse. You have people like the venerable Nyanasara Thera of the Budubalasena type heading a task force that is supposed to be pursuing uh, reconciliation or some part of it. I mean, how more ridiculous can you get? You have the military which is a very divisive force headed by so many sensitive task forces that concern non single Buddhists. So it is a deliberate policy of the state to pursue this single Buddhist identity, to celebrate it and show it that constituency that it solely relies on, that it is to them and only them that they shall be faithful to. Now it is for this policy, unfortunately, the Honorable G.L. Pires, Professor G.L. Pires is now a minister. The Honorable Professor is someone, as a law student, uh, I not only looked up to, but we thought of as uh, almost godly because of his writings, because of his teachings, and more than anything else, as a political student, because of his personal views on Sri Lanka's current constitution, with regards to the 13th Amendment and its severe shortcomings and its almost hopelessness in making it work. So it is that Professor G.L. Pires today who is now the minister of this most important ministry. And the standards that we expect from him personally are very high, certainly for me, is very high. But when Honorable Pires went to Italy, and in Bologna in the G20 summit, I think it was an interfaith meeting, uh, Honorable Minister, when you made your speech there, I was shocked. I know the Prime Minister has also made comments along the same lines as you did, which was that in a country like Sri Lanka, to paraphrase, uh, you know, to have various organizations uh, and parties uh, claim distinct identities as them being such and such a community or such and such a religion, that it is not a good thing. Now when Professor Pires, in fact, Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa is a singular nationalist, he's been a hardline nationalist for a long time, that he says something like that is is one thing I don't think he should say it. He's a, he's a man who has been uh, quite uh, strident when it comes to human rights. He should know better. In fact, I, if, I, if I can have any influence at all, I think uh, in his uh, senior days now as a statesman, he should, uh, he should not pursue the sort of policies that he might have pursued in the past. But Honorable Pires, in my view, should have in fact used his influence in government in the high offices and said that this is not a position that we should take. On the one hand, you have a president who celebrates the fact that the single Buddhist vote is the uh, thing that he would be most faithful to and only faithful to. And then when you have the prime minister and the foreign minister going before the international community and saying that other identities that are being pursued is a disadvantage and is a problem, uh, then I think we are really looking at the raw nature in which this government's policy, not only with regards to domestic affairs, but also its, by extension, its international affairs is, is also going to be. I think, uh, honorable presiding member, we are heading for a lot of trouble. Because if this is the po policy honorable that... Honorable member, the, you have one more minute. If this is the policy that the uh, government wishes to pursue, then you are not going to be able to use in a positive manner the geopolitical climate. On the contrary, in order to pursue this 
monolithic policy you will have to use you'll have to take sides and you have taken a side and now because that side that you took in order to win the war is now coming back to haunt you you think that you can balance it out by selling assets to other interested parties I can tell you you can sell whatever assets that you want but no balancing of strategic presences in this island is going to satisfy India of all other powers. As far as India is concerned, it's a reality that we are its neighbor. And India is not concerned about balancing presences in Sri Lanka. India's only concern is that no other superpower or no other power should have a strategic presence in Sri Lanka and I mean the term strategic presence not presence but you have already created a situation where you have a strategic presence to a power that is not India and you think you think that you can try and balance India's interests Honourable by Member, giving it some assets up. giving India a strategic partner the United States and maybe some other partners some strategic uh, assets. It will never work. You have only one path. Only one path will make you succeed. And that is to make sure remember, please wind that up. Sri Lanka changes its path to one of a plurinational country by embracing its own nations within this country, reflecting that in a new constitution, Honourable Member, please and thereby up. preventing and not allowing the divisions that thus far has allowed this geopolitical contestation to take place and order and, and instead pursue a policy that will be beneficial to all. I'm saying this with utmost responsibility. The Honorable GL Piris, you must weigh in your personal influence and stature. You cannot Honorable afford Member, please this wind government up. to pursue the policies that it has been pursuing. On the contrary, you as an elder statesman and as a very, very respected figure Thank you. on both sides of this house must weigh upon the government and correct its past mistakes.